All right, that's better. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Uh, I just went live and it said uh, the live streaming is not available. I had to close uh, my browser and re-sign in, but, well, I guess it seems to be working. Okay. All right, that's good. Hi there. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, folks. And welcome once again to what we call Cast Iron Wednesday. And I don't just call it Cast Iron Wednesday, so a whole bunch of other YouTube ch cooking channels that have made this something of a tradition. Um, if this is your first time here on this channel, well, Thank you very much for showing up and welcome. Um, as mentioned, a whole bunch of um, <clears throat> YouTube cooking channels, usually the smaller ones, have had a tradition going that where we uh, do something in cast iron on Wednesday. And in my case, I've been uh, doing these live videos now for, oh, good grief, um, almost two years. It'll be like maybe another three months yet. So, but still... Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, what can I say? I've enjoyed these live uh, videos, and I guess people have as well, because you've been kind enough to show up for them, and thank you so much. Um, which means that, once again, hello, it's time to say hi to our uh, folks here, including hey, some everybody. of... Hello, Jamie! Yeah, including some of the regulars, such as Jamie, who uh, show up here uh, every week, and thank you very much. Like uh, William Hurt and Cynthia Wesley. Hello, Midnight Lacey. Um, <clears throat> I just inherited some pans from my grandmother. Anybody know if he accepts message to help with identifying my pans? If you're talking about me, well, yes, I certainly do. So, I mean, this is a live chat and I do my best to read the comments. Um, so, I mean, please feel free. Don't hesitate to ask questions and to answer questions. I mean, I want this to be like a, a uh, free-for-all chat well, with a general subject, of course. So uh, asking questions, anybody here, of course, is free to answer. But, yes, I mean, please feel free to ask questions. So uh, we and hello as well to Val's Black Cat's Rule and Rick Stumbo and uh Clico and midnight no you said that already midnight lacy and uh kimberly miller and so and uh honeyed badger hello hello to everybody uh will we get to the truth of the matter tonight well i certainly hope we do whatever the matter is um one of the matters that we're talking about tonight as mentioned <clears throat> oh and hello uh papa dan as well so uh yeah uh, I was shocked to see. Oh, yes, that's right. And boy, that didn't waste time either. Hello. Uh, no, uh, not can't pronounce that. Nesha's River Catfishing. I was shocked to see the results of the Pyrex test. I had a lot of Pyrex. I have a lot of Pyrex. Yes, I had a feeling <clears throat> that that was going to uh, enter the uh, subject of discussion tonight. And that's one reason why. Yeah, and that's one reason why I'm uh, doing a uh, video not so much about lead, but really more just one about uh, taking stuff out of the lie tank and cleaning them up because it'll give me some a lot of time to concentrate more on this chat so that I won't have to be cooking 24, uh, you know, the entire time uh, over over this. I mean, granted, that's important. That's what this is here for, and I'm I hope that's what folks like to see. But yeah, I get the feeling that there's going to be some uh, <clears throat> talking here tonight. So uh, XXX grape nuts. Well, okay, um, okay. Hello, grape nuts, and uh, Flash fourteen ninety nine. But yes, how much weight can that shelf hold behind your shoulder? I didn't think those things were that strong. Well, yeah, no, that is a really decent rack. I think the bigger question is whether the floor will hold out or not. <laughs> when I uh, got this rack, um, it actually stated that it was it should be able to hold about 300 pounds per shelf. So that was enough to convince me to uh, get that uh, cast iron rack. And yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah. And finally, one other thing, that the big red light on the ceiling. Well, as a matter of fact, that's not a light. That is actually a plastic bowl <laughs> taped to the ceiling. And the reason why we've explained in uh, other messages now or in other chats as well, I will very briefly state that, as you know, <clears throat> It may, I don't know if it's illegal, but I mean, it would ca probably cause trouble 
to say that there is actually a smoke detector under that uh, bowl. So I am not going to say that. What I am going to say is that within the space of less than 10 feet from each other in three separate rooms, there are three smoke detectors on my ceiling. And folks who have seen me, uh, seen these other lives know that my smoke detectors really have no trouble at all going off. So imagine it. Yes. So imagine having a smoke detector right in the kitchen where it would go off anytime at all I heat up a pan. Yeah, let's just say that was really, really annoying. But as I said, I would get in trouble to say if I actually uh, covered up a smoke detector. So, yeah, exactly. So all I'm going to say is that's a plastic bowl taped to the ceiling. <laughs> okay, but now that we've said that, let's go and have some fun, shall we? And yes, as I mentioned, the subject there as well about the lead that is open for discussion as well. Don't you can uh, don't hesitate to talk uh, quote uh, to talk about that as well. Let it be known that I used to love grape nuts until I figured out it's just gravel in a box. <laughs> you know, Jamie loves grape nuts too. So. <laughs> Yes, and William Hurt, I use a plastic bag with a rubber band on my smoke detector, and I still get false alarms all the time. <laughs> okay, but now, having said that, as I mentioned, the subject is more or less, we are going to be cleaning up some uh, cast iron and taking it out of the lie tonight. So, as I said, let's what see. What did Grape Nuts do to you? Yeah, what did Grape Nuts do to you? So, let's, uh, well, let's start here, where I have one of my lie buckets on the uh, floor right now. Uh, the other one is outside, and my big lye tank, you saw that 10-gallon uh, uh, bin that I filled with lye and cast iron last week. Yeah, that's right outside the door, uh, outside there, because I debated and thought, no, I am not going to lug that heavy thing into here just to, uh, just to take cast iron out for the live. I mean, yeah, it would be nice, but uh, no, my back was telling me, no, you're not going to do that. So we will just have to opening up a uh, five-gallon bucket instead. Besides, I've had this uh, like this now for, I think, a few months, and I've practically forgotten what's in it. I know once I reached into one of these buckets and it was empty, and I was afraid somebody had stolen from it, but that's actually not the case. Um, and, yeah, this is just a Home Depot bucket. These things are really great for many uses, and so definitely... That's one reason why they're so let me let me put this uh, down a little closer. Right. There we go. There we go. That's a little better. And yeah, these uh, Home Depot buckets are really popular because they are so useful. As you can see, they even make a decent lie tank. All right, there we go. Yes, it, and as somebody said, oh yeah, we are lying to you tonight. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's why they call it the cult of cast ironitis. Like, like all cults, we lie to you. <laughs> and you like the results, too, just like in a cult. So let's reach in here, and lo and behold, no, it is not empty. There's something in here. And, in fact, a couple of some things. You know, I'm betting you may not expect to see something like this. How about that? And yeah, I think I think folks uh, can tell what this is. Namely, it is a piece of a waffle iron. And if we look on the back, what do we see, bud? It's a WAPIC, no less. So let me stick this in the sink. And um, let's see if I can find its brother, which should also be in here as well. Oh, here it is, as a matter of fact. Bam, how about that? Yes, indeed. What we have here is two halves of a WAPEC or WAPEC um, waffle iron, no less. Unfortunately, this is all I have of this. I still have to find the rest of it, especially the base, and make a, a handle for it. Um, that happened to be one of those flea market scores that I love so much because I managed to, I, had a, I pulled that out of a uh, bin of junk at a flea market and paid all of two bucks for those, for, those, uh, for those waffle irons. So that's why, even though I don't have anything else yet, I'm hoping to uh, rectify that eventually. So right now, though, let's go... Bring and head over to the sink. 
and do a little washing up. Uh, let's try to get this. There we go. I think this is a pretty good view here. I'll bring the microphone over too. That's why I get for doing this on a low budget. Finally, uh, let's do my gloves right now. Only because of the lye residue that's still on that cast iron right at the moment, but we're about to take care of that. As we pull out our favorite cast iron cleaner, or my favorite cast iron cleaner, Barkeeper's Friend. And there's no need to be shy with it. So, all right, here is a little bit of steel wool. Just a bit of water. Oh, yeah, these things are so much fun to clean, too. So, I'm not even expecting to get this thing as clean as I'd like it to. But I'm going to give it a try nonetheless, because hopefully just by giving this a coating of seasoning, at least it should uh, be rust free, I hope, until I can find other pieces or pieces that match this, actually. What I think I need to do with this thing <clears throat> is measure it with a ruler so that I can look for a base that might actually match it, which means it's time to do some research. Because I don't know the size of a base of how what size base would match a uh, waffle iron. <clears throat> I'm hoping that the uh, dimensions are not so unique, like with BSR cast iron, for instance, that only a WAPIC waffle iron base would fit a WAPIC waffle iron. But I'd say one way or another, we will find out. There's one, and now for the other. All right, this is, oh yeah, this is so much fun. I'm sure you folks just loved uh, tuning in to watch me scrubbing cast iron. Well, in fact, I'll bet that is why you're tuned in. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is my idea of a social life. <laughs> okay, still, it's interesting too. This is the uh, WAPIC <clears throat> with the Z logo. You see the underlining under the Z, or some people call it, in fact, the Zorro logo. Because it looks like the old Zorro sword slash mark. Um, I believe that dates it to uh, WAPEC's later days. But even its later days were still pretty old. Because they went out of business, I believe, before World War II. Maybe even before the 19th. I think they went out during the Depression, in fact. So pretty much any WAPEC you find is actually pretty old. And that would likely mean this probably would be from the, oh, I don't know, the 1920s or so. That would be my uh, first guess. A little bit more of this. And in fact, on top of that, I think I'll throw in a little dish soap as well to kind of like suds it up. What I've found actually is when, as far as light surface rust is concerned, even dish soap works pretty good in not uh, in uh, getting that stuff off it's really not that hard to remove i'm not going to spend the entire evening just uh scrubbing these two pans don't these two plates don't worry about that besides at this point i'm hoping don't have to do much more let's see what happens I start rinsing it. Hey, this is looking pretty good already, if you ask me. There we go. Get that barkeeper string residue out of it. Still a little bit of uh, red on it. And, you know, I realize there is even the possibility this could have some fire damage on it because of the way, well, waffle irons, of course, especially in those old days, you know, how they used to uh, cook waffles. I mean, they put the base over the fire, of course, on your stove. And the result, it's entirely possible that there may be some permanent reddish stains on this. This one's not quite done yet. Let me stick a little bit more there. And then after that, we will coat it and uh, start with the seasoning. 
Well, the first thing I'm going to do actually is coat it with um, Crisco <clears throat> and drain it off and heat it up in the oven. Then I'll season it. more yeah it's hard to tell exactly and i have to say as i've said many times before i'm not an expert so i can't tell how much of this is rust or whether or not there might be permanent fire damage on this which is again why not just myself but a lot of people say not to throw cast iron into the fire when cleaning it. Wonder if I should actually build an e tank for these things. May not be out of the question. But until then. I guess some of this looks like it's still still stained. Let me try again. Try one last application and then we will move on. I mean, if I have to come back to this, I will. But as I said, I don't want to waste your entire evening. So, give this a little bit more brushing with the barkeeper's friend. Hmm. Hard to tell, but it might indeed just be rust. More ingrained rust, though, not just surface rust. Actually, that doesn't look too bad, although even now there's still a little bit more. Okay. Short answer is I think I'm actually going to have to uh, give these an electrolysis treatment. I don't think I can just simply scrub the uh, rust off of these things. I mean, hey, for two bucks, I can't really complain. Right now, then, I'm just going to coat these. I'm not actually going to season them coat them to prevent them from getting any more rust <clears throat> and then this is going to have to be a i'm going to come back to this project so uh, that means move over here for the moment <clears throat> yeah definitely the e-tank for this besides as I'm sure folks who actually have waffle irons and know how much fun they are to clean <laughs> will tell you it's darn near impossible. Therefore, as I said, the more I think of it, the more I think this is going to need the e-tank treatment. So that means right now <clears throat> I'll just have to move on. Give these things a coating of Crisco. Notice, by the way, <clears throat> I'm going to coat this with Crisco even as it's wet. Because my plan is, is that the heat of the oven will still, will still help the uh, actual water to evaporate. Um, where did my rag go? I think this is it. Yeah. Yeah, this would be it. Oh, here it is. Okay, good. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> my intention is for the heat of the oven to let the water evaporate, but that is not going to remove the, um, the Crisco. So that should still have a coating to prevent further oxidation while still drying it out. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing here. Again, coating it with Crisco. 
and then I'm going to stick it into the oven to more or less dry it out. One more bit here. Okay, with any luck, I think we could safely say the worst of it is this one. So I'm getting the worst of it over with first. First, the worst. Yuck, yuck, yuck. All right. Ugh. Yeah, I know. There's really no way I'm going to be able to get this thing completely clean. At least not right now. So here's one piece. I also want to be sure not to do this forever, as I said, and waste all your time. The ones after this are going to be easier to clean, and so I guess you could say more fun. All right. Um, anyway, once I get this thing into the oven in a moment, I will uh, come to your comments, and then we will move on to the next one or two. But anyway, that's the procedure that I use for, well, cleaning cast iron. As I mentioned, I soak it in the lye tank for a long time, take it out, <clears throat> coat it with Crisco to keep it from further rusting, and into the oven it goes to dry off. Meanwhile, ah. right. okay, having said that, I think let's do a view of the lie tank here and let's see what I might have missed, if anything. <clears throat> okay, check out, yeah, identifying old cast iron pans. Well, thank you very much, Clico. <laughs> Loving the waffle iron. Well, yeah, I was actually happy to find that. As I mentioned, it, I paid all of two bucks for those things. So even if I never find anything else, well, that would still make it worth it. And if, if need be, I could always sell it or even trade it for a partial credit on something. Don't know what. What chemicals are in that bucket? That is lye, um, <clears throat> which is basically lye. You go to uh, any good hardware store or even Wally World and go to their plumbing section and look for drain cleaner. Yes, I did say drain cleaner. However, this drain cleaner actually has a label on it that says 100% lie. Um, I did a video just last weekend, one of those short YouTube videos that shows putting the uh, lie tank together. And that's essentially what I did with this bucket as well. So uh, lie is actually a, a good chemical to use. Uh, and I'll say this briefly, namely that I know, especially thanks to the internet, there's a lot of phobia going around about the word chemicals. And oh no, I'm going to have chemicals touching my cast iron and my food. Not all chemicals are bad or evil. Um, and in fact, lye, for instance, which is definitely a chemical, has been has been in use not just with cleaning, but uh, really in a whole lot of household uses for centuries. Lye originally came from wood ash. It's basically ba a basis of. Uh, well, I guess carbon-based. Um, I don't. I don't know all my chemistry, but the point being is that it's a safe chemical. It it can be dangerous. Yes, you do not. You have to take precautions when using it. Uh, you know, like safety gloves, for instance, um, and keep it in a uh, ventilated area, and especially do not let kids or or pets near it. But when it is carefully handled, it is actually uh, pretty safe to use. So. I'll be willing to uh, contribute a fund by a less what microphone? Lava effect? I don't know. Is there a problem with the sound? Uh, anyway, take your time. Yeah. Uh, Jose Latias, I picked up a Griswold uh, LBL large block logo, logo Dutch oven. Well, congratulations. Definitely sounds like you made a couple of good scores. Both are in the lye bath. Yes, exactly. And we can leave it in the lye bath until we feel like uh, cleaning it out. Then uh, Nessus River catfishing. I love my e tank. I found a village Sears, a vintage Sears battery charger for five bucks. Hey, sounds and there's another good score for you right there. So, yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> and hello there. Uh, waffle irons and grill pans are great if there's someone else's. <laughs> and yeah, that's a good way to put it. I definitely agree with there, Honey Badger. Hey there, uh, roadside assistance guy. Welcome back. Maybe I missed it because I haven't been on much. What do you? When do you think you'll be moving into your new place? <laughs> well, that's gonna be a uh, little. That's a yeah. That's become something of a sore subject. No, not from you folks, but uh, let's just say there's been some drama and some not so good news involved with that. But well, yeah, we'll we'll say we'll leave it at that. So, yeah, we'll we will be talking about it a little later. <laughs> okay, uh, Cynthia Wesley, uh, I am out the bar. Oh. I ran out of the bar S and was looking at my comment. Oh, you mean barkeeper's friend. Should I go for it? Well, yeah, com I don't see why you couldn't use comment to clean cast iron. After all, you clean other things with it. Uh, years ago, I got some lye from the grocery store. I tried making soap. Yes, that is the very same stuff. And the sound is doing good as well. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So, um, okay. Now that like now that we've uh, caught up on the comments, let's move on and well, let's do something a little bit more interesting, like clean a, a, another cast iron piece. Hopefully, an easier one. Actually, it's definitely going to be an easier one. Because what else do we have in here? Well, for starters, we have. Oh, this is interesting. Check this one out. It's a favorite. It's a favorite number three, in fact, where it says 3A as well. So, and this one actually looks like it's in uh, pretty good condition as well. So, I mean, the surface looks pretty smooth. This is going to be much easier to clean than that uh, waffle iron was. And while we're at it, let's see what else we have down here. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about this as well. I've been uh, keeping this. I should really get around to seasoning this as well. This is one of those Walmart... Uh, cookie pans from Christmas. If anybody remembers one of these. So yeah, I managed to score this one for, I don't know, a buck, two bucks or something, which definitely, yeah, this is uh, one of those little novelty items that I'm looking forward to uh, cleaning up. So in that goes. Finally, one more. Um, oh yeah, this one. And, it's, and I think this is the last thing in the tank too. I actually put this back in the uh, lie to uh, clean it up. You've seen this one before. <laughs> the uh, pig head mold or the uh, hog head cheese mold. Yeah, uh, this thing uh, got a little uh, corroded, unfortunately. And so I decided to uh, put this back in and strip it and reseason it. So that's uh, what we're going to do. And with that, let's move over to the sink once again. Let's try to get a better view. I know you want a better view of that. So, there we go. And with that, away we go. This is going to be much easier. Let me move that microphone back again. There we go. This is going to be much easier than those waffle irons were, that's for sure. In fact... Nice thing about lot one of the good things about lye is it's actually water soluble. So that means all I really have to do is initially anyway rinse it off. And wow, this stuff is coming off easy too. I like that. There we go. And one more. Okay, get this out, and maybe a little bit more scrubbing, but as I said, this is going to be much easier than those, than those things were. Come on. There we go. And, yeah, I don't skimp on this stuff. I mean, Barkeeper's Friend is all of two bucks for a can of that, of that stuff, so... Yeah, I can be generous with it. A little bit of this. A little bit of that. Hmm. 
nice and simple. This is no difficulty at all, in fact. There we go. Side on a little bit more. There we go, that came off nicely. There we go, that did not take very long at all. And now we've got ourselves a favorite. Which means, uh, let's get this thing dried off quickly, and then move on. Yeah, yeah, YouTube camera. Sorry. There we go. Let's get this dried off quickly, and then move on to the next one. Uh. And this is one, one reason why I know there are people who are reluctant to use the lie tank because it does sound scary. There's no denying that. Uh, I think this is one of the easiest methods there are there is or are for uh, cleaning cast iron. I mean, it does a great job. Is uh, really relatively low cost. Is a cinch to put together, and the results definitely speak for themselves. I'm giving this a nice thick coating of the Crisco as well because again, this is not actually seasoning. I mean, when seasoning cast iron, yes, you're supposed to apply a thin coating. I'm intentionally putting a thick coating of this stuff on because I want to coat every bit of the surface so as to prevent oxidation. When we get down to the actual seasoning, I will rub off or uh, remove most of this uh, most of this stuff here, and then we'll do the uh, light coating. There we go. All right, that was that. There we go. So we're off to a decent start at least with a uh, favorite number three. Do I see a crack? No, that wasn't a crack. Okay, <laughs> that was just a hair. All right, into the oven with this one. Next, go out. After this, I will chat a little bit more and then we will uh, get the stuff that's out of the lie tank outside. Let's take care of this baby, shall we? Let me get a better view again. There we go. Come on, there we go. Much better. Okay. Okay. Finally, and thank you for waiting again, folks. At this point, I'm not even using the gloves. I rinsed off the uh, majority of the lye residue, so anything that's here now will not will not hurt me. There, or as we like to say these days, dear universe, please stop demonstrating what will not what will not what will make me stronger because it doesn't kill me. I don't want to know. All right. And that really took very little time at all. Fortunately, all I really had to do was strip off the seasoning. There was, as you can see, really no rust to worry about on this thing. Thank goodness. Because, in fact... This particular piece, the uh, pig head mold, 
was a lucky eBay score I got. And I think I got it at a reasonably low price of about 30 bucks because it was completely coated with paint. Um, yeah, I mean, somebody had painted this and used it as a decoration. So I soaked this thing in the lie tank for a good couple of months or so and completely got rid of the paint. And yes, I did do a lead test as well to make sure that there was no lead residue on it before uh, seasoning, it, seasoning it up. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to re-season it. At that time, there was indeed some rust to be removed. And yeah, getting it out of all of these, uh, <laughs> all of these ridges and, and folds and everything like that in this, that was a real pain. Okay, that means now, and again, here we go, once again, we give it a nice liberal and thick coating of the Crisco and be sure to get it into all of those nooks and crannies. There we go. That means the nose. That means the eyes. And all around this ridge as well. Eyes, nose, mouth. Ooh, this thing is heavy too. It's thick. All right. which is, again, is why I'm being a liberal so, I, so that I can get it into as many crevices as possible. And the nice thing as well is this will melt. Anyway, the Crisco will melt as it's uh, heating up in the oven. Because, yeah, I have my oven actually set to 225 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not very hot, all things considered. Hot enough to initially heat up the uh, iron so that the first coating of seasoning will melt right away. And that's the first step in the seasoning process. You heat up the iron, then apply your seasoning, and repeat. All right. Doing as fast as I can here. Fortunately, we are just about done, and then we'll get to the last piece. All right, a little bit more around this mouth. There we go, come on. All right, there we go. And into the oven this guy goes. Now for the last piece, at least for now. This little thing. Looks like there is a little bit of rust. So, hello, barkeeper's friend. Or as I like to call it, cast iron cook's friend. Barkeeper's friend is a great thing to use when cleaning up old cast iron or even new cast iron. It is very, very slightly acidic, which is why it's such a great rust remover. Lye does not remove rust. It is a base rather than an acid. And I know they say you can uh, use vinegar to uh, neutralize lye. I'm just curious. I only thought of this at this very moment. I wonder if Barkeeper's Friend would neutralize lye for that very reason. One of these days, maybe I'll find out, but not yet. Come on, what's going on here? A little bit in this corner. And the rest of it. Okay. interesting this little corner being a little more stubborn than i would have liked let's do this again a 
which means patience. Patience, you must learn, young Jedi. Of course, this is very rough iron anyway. I'm assuming it's iron. I mean, as far as I can tell, it has the same makeup as those other um, cast iron, you know, those Walmart cookie skillets. So it's definitely not a candle. You've seen those uh, so-called cast iron candle holders that are actually not. They're made of some from, I forget how they do it, some other type of metal, but it's not, not, yeah, maybe, but it's not cast iron. On your little bugger. Uh, let's see what we have now. Come on. I wasn't expecting it to be this difficult. I was actually being rather persistent. Hmm. Okay, one last time, I hope. All right. I'm starting to wonder if this thing might actually have a coating. I've seen a few Asian-made pieces, although not in a long time, that had that kind of coating. Oh, it seems, actually, I think it's coming off this time. I think we're finally getting there. Looks like it might be permanently stained, but I do believe we're finally getting there. Or is it just me, or does this look exactly the same as it did before? Huh. I'm actually surprised. Now I'm starting to wonder if there might be something going on with this one. Because, again, this is just a simple little piece. Uh, I may have to put this one aside. Well, granted, I didn't, again, I didn't pay a lot for this. So it would not be a loss to find if there was something else going on. I don't know what. No, not lead. Lead doesn't do this. Lead doesn't have this kind of a residue. And so, but I'm probably going to have to come back to this one. All right. Well, okay. Having said that, at least we've got those other things in the oven. And I do have a couple more pieces coming tonight as well, including the one in the thumbnail photo. But nonetheless, get this out of the way. Hi there. Okay. While I've been waiting, let's see what we have here for our comments again. Oh, yeah. Good evening, grumpy old gringo. Nice to see you here as well. So... Ugly Hammer, they said, is an unknown from the South. Um, it's hard to say where Ugly Hammered came from. I mean, there's a longstanding rumor that has not been proven. I don't know if it ever will be proven that Ugly Hammered is actually uh, made with prison labor. But again, there is no proof of that. So who knows? Uh, years ago, I got some light from the, uh, okay, from the uh, grocery store. Yes, here we are. Where's Peg Tooth? Well, I hope she's shown up by by now. I was so happy for you to, with them, Jose. It was two, if I remember right. Hello, nice favorite. Yeah, yeah, the favorite, actually, that was nice. It's cleaned up like a breeze. It's a nice number, nice one to add to my number three collection. Yeah, number three skillets for cast iron collectors. Yeah, they're those things. Almost, yeah, just like the ashtray skillets. They're like crack. You just keep getting more and more of them. So, Jose Latias, for the record, I just took the uglies from the lye bath and they're on the shelf waiting to be cleaned in season. Oh, yes, yes, congratulations on those. Uh, yeah, I wonder where you scored those from. <laughs> Actually, I really hope you get some good use out of them or sell them, whichever you prefer. <clears throat> they're yours. You can do whatever you want with them. And yes, I paid uh, Rick Stumbaugh. I paid dearly for it, but I wanted it. Yeah, I know. With it, every so often, I run across one of those myself as well. We don't see favorites around these parts too often. Yeah, that's one reason why I couldn't resist it. Okay. Uh, hello, and again, big uh, grumpy old gringo. And hello, and what's shaking? Well, the cast iron shaking, as you can see. And yes, you can. Yes, describing the lie tank. That's true. You can leave uh, pans in the lie tank for months, 
and it will not affect them because lye simply does not affect the iron. And that's one really good reason for using it. So, so if you do a lye pot, do you just leave the lye in it forever? Wouldn't, wouldn't know how to dispose of it. Well, um, um, I don't know what the formula is or for when some people determine that the lye may seem to be weakening, maybe because it's got too much crud in it from, uh, or, you know, dissolving an old seasoning. But, uh, there are people who have, had their lye tanks for a good couple of years or more, you can easily get an entire year's worth out of one lye tank. As for disposing it, well, it's drain cleaner. I mean, it even says so on the label that you uh, get at the, uh, uh, it, when you buy it in the plumbing section, which means that you can legally pour it down the drain. That's exactly what it's for. And furthermore, there is no chemical reaction that is going to transform that old seasoning that dissolves into it. It's not going to be become some kind of weird uh, chemical with uh, like uranium hexafluoride or something like that. It'll still just be just that, dissolved seasoning. So it's all safe to be disposed of, which is why, yes, you can pour it down the drain. Unless you have a septic tank, you do not want to pour it down the septic tank because it could very well kill off the uh, crucial uh, bacteria and other uh, growth things uh, that uh, that make a septic tank worth work. Oh, Lord, he said crack. I was on panic mode. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. I found a little hair on that for a second. I thought it might have been, but it was just a hair. So I purchased recently a two Dutch ovens. One was huge with an iron lid grabber, four pans and deep fryer for $200. That doesn't sound like too much these days. I mean, it, I mean, because a lot of sellers have uh, run by three rules, unfortunately, when it comes to cast iron. Old is good, big is good, but old and big are better. And yes, I would disagree with that. But nonetheless, that's really how uh, most antique vendors seem to sell their things. So uh, I said, I sat straight up. <laughs> Find a good iron workers union where they can point you to the right direction to a qualified welder. Oh, somebody did have something with a crack. Well, uh, my condolences for that. Um, but I'm saying that fortunately, no, that favorite was not cracked. Okay, Papa Dan, through eating now. I know that it's Wednesday because supper never goes as planned and thunderstorms roll in. Yes, indeed. I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> so a pig head mold. How cool and different would make a fun pork loaf? Well, that's exactly what I've used it for. I've got at least one video already, uh, if you look on my channel, where I have indeed made hog head cheese uh, using that mold. And that stuff turned out fantastic, too. I really like the flavor of that. So, okay. Do you use just one can of lye per five gallons of water, or do you make it hotter? You can use more if you want. This is not really a rocket science. It is science, yes. But it is very variable, and it is not the type of thing where you actually have to measure the precise amounts, use a, me a scale or measuring spoon or anything like that. Uh, if you throw more lye into it, it will work. So there is really no problem with that. I mean, just a rough estimate we use of uh, one pound of lye for five gallons per of water is a general estimate. I don't even know who originally came up with that estimate, but the short answer is it works. And if you feel that you need to put more lye in there, well, that, of course, is entirely your decision, and that's still not going to hurt the iron. Okay, I'm thundering like crazy at Papa Dan's place. I use a toothbrush to get into those hard-to-reach places. Yeah, I've, I've got one or two of those as well. Yes, vinegar works well. In my job, we, we use lye, a.k.a. caustic soda, to make glue with cornstarch. I got some on my legs and a, and a little sweat. It burned fast. Yes, indeed. I used water at first. Ouch, my condolences on that, so. Okay. Uh, Midnight Lacey, I have a crack in a beautiful 14 inch. Oh, my condolences. There's really not much, much else I can say about that. I'm sorry to say. And Jose, glad you're back. I understand about being shorthanded. I remember those days. <laughs> I'm sure there's a video, but what do you find works best for rust? Number one best rust remover for cast iron is the E-Tang, is the electrolysis treatment. It will remove rust from just about any cast iron, about the only cast iron it will not remove rust from, well, two instances. One, fire damage. 
fire damage is permanent and i've i've tried it i've actually used the e-tank for days and days on a fire damage cast iron pan it did not work the other one once i came across a pan from korea that had some sort of weird coating on it it had gotten rust underneath yes uh or rust on the surface so that it looked like it but nothing worked I used lye. I used vinegar. I used electrolysis on that on that thing. Nothing budged it. The, those rust stains remain there no matter what I did to it. This was several years ago. I'm afraid I don't have that pan anymore. It was definitely Korean, though. I'm convinced that there was some kind of a coating on that that was simply preventing everything from uh, um, uh, cleaning it up. All right. And having said all that, I think it's time now to bring out the star of the show. But for that, that is in that uh, cat in that big lie tub that I have uh, outside, um, which means that, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to actually leave the camera for a minute or so to uh, bring that in because that is a big 10 gallon uh, tub full of lye and cast iron. No, I was not going to uh, carry that in here to uh, demonstrate it on the live. I mean, yes, it would have been nice, but my back was telling me, no, you are not doing that. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, let's get a view of over here uh, of the sink where it's going to show up, where it's going to be. I'll try to get close to the sink again. Don't you just love this roller coaster ride? There we go. That's a pretty good view. And with that, I will be right back. Uh, yeah, need my gloves. Now, I will be right back. And here is piece number one from the lie tank. You remember this. The walking liberty skillet. Uh, let's get this thing in here right away. Yeah, uh, after cooking with that last week, uh, I saw the seasoning was already starting to run thin when I cleaned it off. So I decided, okay, we're not going to waste any time on this. We're just going to uh, toss this in the lie tank and strip it completely. And then we will season this from scratch. So here we are again. And yeah, I'm, if you haven't seen this one, folks, I mean, uh, it's a really, really beautiful design on this, on this uh, Cracker Barrel pan. Again, it's based on the Walking Liberty Half Dollar. From the uh, twenty, from the early twentieth century, it's and while Cracker Barrel has made a number of those pans now, or produ or rather Lodge has made a number of those pans with Cracker Barrel over the past eleven years or so, I think the Walking Liberty one is going to become a, something of a collector's item because it is quite beautiful, more attractive, as nice as the Buffalo Nickel skillet is, and I'm glad I have one. I think this one is more attractive. So I'm definitely going to uh, be sure to season this one good. Now let's wash it off. There we go. Thank you. 
can with a color almost similar to the coin itself. Here's the Walking Liberty half dollar skillet. Now let's get this thing dried off and coated and into the oven. All right. As always, thank you for your patience, folks. Fortunately, this is not going to be difficult at all as long as I do it quickly. That's the key. Doing it fast before flash rust sets in. Which means I can't even talk very much right now because I want to get this done nice and fast. All right. Now for this. There we go. Once again, yeah, you too. Give this a nice thick coating so that we can get it into all those nooks and crannies again. There we go. As I said, this is not the first seasoning here. This is just to give it a coating to keep it from rusting. So again, that's why I'm being generous with the coating right now. There we go. That's the worst of it. All right. I think I need a little bit more. There we go. That's better. And handle. go. Essentially rust proof. Not very strong rust proof coating. That's where the seasoning comes in, but there we go. And into the oven goes Lady Liberty. Let's do this right. Uh, move this over a little bit. All right, there we go. So far, so good. And having done that, Move back here for the last time. And now comes the real star of the show. The one that is in the thumbnail. The one that I... What? Oh, yeah. Hi, Jamie. The other... Okay, the other star of the show. The one that is uh, in the lie tank, and it's going to come out right now. I will be right back. And here it is. Ah. Oh, there we go. Whew. And if you folks are thinking that I'm rather proud of this find, you're right. Okay. Pressure where the extra seasoning residue. I 
found it with rust on the bottom there at Brimfield too. It's one reason why, as, as I said, I had to clean this up. Nonetheless, let's see what happens. And again, I hope it's not fire damage. Yes, indeed. This is the Birmingham Stove and Range Deep Fryer. The Red Mountain Series one that could date as early as the 1930s. Yeah, actually, this is uh, this barkeeper's friend is working pretty easy on this. This isn't this isn't taking long at all, is it? <laughs> So far, so good. <sighs> yeah, it has the, I mean, the Sportsman Fish Fryer is not especially difficult. I mean, it's always, uh, it's always a good score to find one of them. But we've seen a number of the shallow fish fryers over the years. Even the uh, older ones like this. That have the um, that have the uh, rec the angled uh, handle to them, but I myself did not even know that this deep fryer with the angled handle existed until only a few years ago, and that's why I was absolutely flabbergasted to use one word to uh, discover this at Brimfield. So yeah, this was one of those, I don't know if it's a once in a lifetime find, but it is definitely a score that I'm quite proud of. That's one reason why I'm so eager to get this thing cleaned up so that we can use it. And like I said, I'm being generous here with the barkeeper's friend. Fact, let's be more generous. There we go. this stuff. Sorry, I can't talk very... Oh, damn it. Just keep this all over me. Why don't I? Anyway, sorry, I can't talk very much right now. Like I said, I'm doing my best to clean this up. And there it goes again. Okay, let me get this over. As quickly as possible. However, it does look like that rust was barely surface rust. That didn't... Really, that came off with no difficulty at all. So, I'd say we're doing pretty good with this. Also, as recommended by uh, some cast iron collectors, I'm using cold water, by the way, to wash this off right now. As they say, cold water helps to inhibit the flash rust. So good. Ugh. There we 
we go. Ah. Wow, how exciting. Yes, everybody's tuning in to watch me wash my dishes. <laughs> oh, still, this is quite a dish. <laughs> and yeah, I know, you usually say that to, to describe somebody who is rather attractive looking. Well, guess what? <laughs> All right. Ah. This is quite a dish indeed. All right. Okay. Now we move over there quickly. Get this beauty dried off. And coated. So, what fun. There we go. Uh, now, yeah, we get these gloves off. Uh, there we go. Go as fast as we can here. And there we go. Going as fast as we can here. And like I said, I don't even need to get this bone dry. My plan again, which seems to work pretty well with the cast iron I've done, um, is to just quickly dry it, then coat it, and then heat it up in the oven, because once it's heated up in the oven, that should cause the water molecules that are still on the surface to evaporate. But the Crisco will not. So the Crisco will remain on the surface and prevent it from rusting anymore. Actually, well, I won't brag too much, not until we get this in the oven. Let me check this. Uh, no, not a crack. There, feel, there seems to be a rough spot here casting flaw, but it is not a crack. Will do. All right. Because this is such a big pot, it's taking a little while to coat this thing. Uh, I measured it when I last took it out. Uh, just after Brimfield. This thing is not the exact dimensions of the uh, newer Lodge deep fryer. Um, there is a very slight difference in the uh, measurements to the point where the Lodge deep fryer has a lid. This does not have a lid. The Lodge deep fryer lid does not perfectly fit on this, unfortunately. I tried. I tried on the uh, video. And let's take a closer look here to confirm there is no crack on this side. Ugh. Which means now, ugh. yeah, I'm groaning ugh, because this thing is still heavy. Uh, let's do this as quickly as we can. Uh. There we go. That's what I wanted. I was very happy with how quickly and easily the rust came off the bottom of this thing. Kudos to the guy who first restored it before selling it. He did a good job. Yes, there was some rust on it still when I got it at Brimfield, but... As I mentioned just now, side, that came off very easily. And I'm very happy with that. This outer surface is a little rough, in fact. It was not polished smooth. You can even see a flaw or two on the sides, but still no signs of cracks. All right. Now for the other side, Ugh. and then we will be just about ready to get this baby into the oven. All right.
right. Uh. Okay, finally a little bit on the handle itself. And and the other side, and we'll be ready. Ugh. There we go. Oh, I have several pieces in my collection I'm very proud of, and I think I can safely say this is going to be one of them. Okay. Having done that, here you are. Here is a nice shot for you folks. And now into the oven. I haven't even done the actual seasoning yet. But let's get going. Actually, it's especially for that reason, I'm going to put it in this side up. Oh. All right. That takes care of the first step. <laughs> because next comes the actual seasoning. However, let me wash my hands for the moment. And then we will get down to some comments. And yes, if you want to talk about lead, we can talk about lead too. So far, so good, though. Whew. All right, move this to the side. There. Whew. Boy, that was fun. <laughs> Louis J. Castor and Cooking. I picked up a five inch heat treated lodge skillet placed in my lye tank. After I cleaned it up, I noticed a huge crack on the side. Oh, my control. A heat treated one? You mean one of those new ones? Boy, that didn't take long. Uh, I'm not saying it was a defect. I mean, who knows what happened to it? Maybe somebody actually dropped it, and that might be why they, uh, fan that might be why, well, they sold it, unfortunately. <laughs> so, hmm. Okay, let's see what else we have. Thanks, Betts and Turner. Betts, I wasn't sure if you were here. Hello to you. Um, okay, it was in a 100-year-old warehouse. Okay, let's back, let me back up these comments a little bit here. My Cajun Classic uh, Oval Roaster, Deep Fish Fryer, will be the star of my show on Friday. That BSR one looks great. Well, thank you. And yeah, I, I like those as well. The, the Cajun Classic one, that's the one with that really, I shouldn't say beautiful, but that really neat lobster or crayfish on the lid, isn't it? Yeah, that really, that's why they put those designs on those things. That's what, because that's what sells. But hey, I mean, who, who am I one to talk? After all, I got that um, late walking liberty skillet because of the design on it. It's not like I have any more modern day lodge cast iron pans. So yeah, <laughs> I admit those, those designs are really good sellers. There's no denying on that as well. Hope I didn't miss out on the walking liberty skillet. I need to go to Cracker Bell and try to get one. Yeah, I would I would definitely say go and uh, go and get one if you can. So has anyone seen one on Cracker Bell, the uh, iron pan? I'm so tempted. So do you do you think you will sell your Pyrex now after the positive test? I'm thinking of testing all of mine as well. Yeah. <laughs> That was something of a shocker. Yes, there's no denying that, that there is, in fact, um, it's that the paint used to uh, design, to coat the outside of that Pyrex was, in fact, leaded paint. And that's actually fairly well known as well among vintage collectors. This was not a new discovery. What's new, I guess, was the fact that, it, uh, that we actually revealed in public 
with a uh, lead test, just how much lead is there. It's similar, really. I mean, the test that I used in that video was, in fact, a lead paint test of the kind that they use in homes. So, yeah. Now that that's like that, well, yeah, I am indeed leery about using that uh, those uh, Pyrex anymore. And yes, I'm very sad about that because it's been pointed out that even though it's on the outside, there are ways that it could very well rub off onto, well, the inside, like say just by stacking those bowls one inside the other, for instance. So I'm unfortunately not happy with that. Um, I'm still trying to debate on what to do because if I were to take that and sell it to an antique mall, they would just put it on display with all the rest of their uh, Pyrex. Would they mention that it has lead on it? Of course not. Nobody would buy it then. So I'm not sure. It may very well, maybe I'll just uh, do a um, smashing party. Of course, that would tick a lot of people off. How dare you destroy those priceless antiques? Well, they're not priceless, but... <laughs> well, okay. William, you caused chaos. Okay, Cynthia, it depends on the welder and how... Oh, yeah, welding a cracked pan. That's right. I'm not quite sure because we all have a lot of pans, but I do think it's a Wagner. Ouch. Yeah, and, I'm, and again, well, unfortunately, these things happen, and I can only ask that you uh, do... Well, do what you feel is worth it because it, it it can be expensive to weld old cast iron. There's no denying that, and it may very well be out of your budget. So, I mean, maybe for sentimental reasons because it was your mom's pan, that's really up to you, and I can't make that kind of a decision for you. So, um, <clears throat> okay, it all depends on the welder and how well you know them. Yes, my coworker did two of them for me, and I just bought and I just bought him lunch twice. <laughs> okay, yeah, and that's the answer about the Pyrex as well. Has anyone seen? It? Oh yeah, we just said that about the Cracker Barrel pan. Yes, yeah, the Cracker Barrel. I am quite happy uh, to uh, have a, have acquired. As I mentioned already, I get the feeling this is one of those ones that is going to be a collector's item just because it's such a beautiful design and because it's such a well-known design. The Walking Liberty half dollar is <clears throat> already well-known and indeed quite collectible as well. So I do feel that if you were to get this for the collector's value, you might actually get something out of it. I'm just happy to own one as well. And besides, I've got some personal reasons for it again, in that it reminds me of mom again, <laughs> because it was mom who got me into coin collecting back in the 1970s. And the Walking Liberty skillet was indeed one of her uh, very favorites. Uh, skillet. <laughs> the Walking Liberty half dollar was indeed one of her very favorites. So, yeah, that does mean it does, yes, have more sentimental value for me. <laughs> okay, did your chaos alarm, I mean, smoke alarm go off? Yeah, well, if you call that your chaos alarm, I will be flattered. <laughs> okay, uh, cast, can't find Liberty Online on Cracker Bell, just the Buffalo. So, yeah, I think it may be worth it then to make a run to your local Cracker Bell to see if we can actually score one of them that way. So, electrolysis, will that take the enamel off of a skillet? Um. I don't think so. Uh, I have not yet tried doing that. I think the enamel coating is good enough that it may actually still stay on even with electrolysis. I might actually suggest that you ask other experts on that. I don't feel like I could give you a definitive, definitive answer on that. I have a 19th century uh, uh, formerly enameled pot. And that I use, in fact, as a uh, coin, um, uh, you know, a coin change uh, pot. You know, the kind like most people have change drawers or change jars that you throw coins into. I used that one. That was about a two quart enameled 19th century gate mark cast iron pen. The enamel was badly cracked, of course. I even tried seasoning it in the oven, and yeah, the enamel just popped and it shattered. So I actually did a bad thing. I took that pot to a sandblaster and did have it sandblasted to remove the enamel. However, because of the fact that 19th century enameled cast iron used lead in the, uh, in the enamel glaze, I am never going to cook with that. I still need to actually get a Dremel or something and permanently mark lead on that pot. 
Yeah, I feel it's safe enough to use as a change, as you know, for throwing in my loose change. But no, I am never ever going to cook with that pot. So, uh, I was made aware of Lodge's Walk Buffalo Nickel and the Walking Liberty pans, and you got them too. Well, congratulations, Papa Dan. But yeah, that's the most important thing is you love using them. I mean, that's really the whole point. I'm really flattered that folks like enjoying why watching my videos they're fun to make and especially gratifying when people watch them but the most important thing of course is that they should be useful to you whether you uh use them every day like i do almost with my uh with my walk or if you have a uh pen that you want to hang on the wall that's your choice then of course it's all it's all up to you it's your cast iron and you can do what you want with it uh, I already, and hello, and I mentioned again, Big Blue's, uh, Cajun Classic Roaster, um, <clears throat> and yeah, there we go, electrolysis removes, uh, enamel, and I don't think it does, I don't recall seeing any examples of that, and I have not used any electrolysis on, electrolysis on, uh, enamel caster and myself as well, so I don't have an answer for that. Um... Uh, Fisherman, I'm asking if it will. I have an old gate mark skillet with cracking enamel on the cooking surface. Well, like I said, I had it sandblasted and that did completely remove the enamel. However, I still would not cook with it for that reason. I do, I will, I, this is one thing I will say in, in terms of advice. I may be an amateur, but I'm still going to give this advice. Do not cook in enameled 19th century cast iron pots uh, because they were in, they did indeed were made with lead in the, uh, in the uh, glaze. So uh, I do not recommend it. And not even if you do have it sandblasted, I'm sorry to say like I did, uh, please do not cook in those pots. Okay. Uh, I have the same Pyrex 444 and will still use it. Uh, I've known about the lead on the outside, and even some modern pieces have lead glaze on the outside, yes. And that is really a uh, choice, again, for you to make. So, I mean, I just advised folks not to use uh, 19th century enamel because of the lead. But uh, ultimately, it's really your choice. Uh, I hope you make the right choice, which may or may not be the one that I made. I don't know. Uh, but that's the best I can say. Okay, my right arm will be jacked like Homer Simpson's when he had only one barbell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this must be the part where I was cleaning those uh, pans and especially that big pot. And I don't, I don't blame you. Yeah, you should be proud of the deep fish fryer score. Considering your best purchases, it marks up there with buying Stumpy. Uh, I've never seen a deep fryer in person. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I am indeed quite proud of that uh, deep fryer. And yeah, I would indeed say uh, put it on the same level as Stumpy. And I'm definitely looking forward to seasoning this thing, which I'm going to do in a few minutes and put it through its paces. Um. So yeah, I'm quite. I'm quite happy with it, and you will be seeing more of that deep fryer here on this channel. I can guarantee you that. Um, okay. I had some in need to reorder some. Shoot, I'm late. Louis J. Castor and Cooking. Well, hello, as as we say, Louis J. You are you are here and we're still here. And good grief, we're already at uh an hour and twenty-three, and I haven't even gotten down to actually seasoning these pans yet. <laughs> The dreaded crack scare while cleaning new to you, cast iron. Yes, I know that all too well. <laughs> I just had one tonight, and it fortunately it turned out to be a hair. So <laughs> Papa Dan, get lots of sleep. Yes, exactly. If you need to go to bed, please go to bed. Tonight is a work night for everybody. So, okay. Having said that, uh, are we just about done? I think we're just about ready here. Great info and advice on enamel cookware. Well, I do my best. I can't give any other answer than that. So, okay. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you, Midnight Lacey. I'm glad you enjoy this. I mean, that's really the whole point. As I've said again and again, what we're really here for is to have fun. If learning is fun, good. That's even better. <laughs> so I would think enamel is non-conductive and electrolysis would be ineffective on it. That's a good point. You may have a point there. So um, where I'm calling from, we call them crawdads. <laughs> Okay, I think I better get down to the seasoning part because we are getting late. 
And then we will be, uh, well, we'll be able to call it a night. And thank you once again, everybody, for showing up. And we still have 81 or 82 people here. Thank you so much. Because now we actually get down to the real seasoning, finally. Okay. <clears throat> that means we get to do the roller coaster thing again. What fun. Actually, let me see if I can put it on this side so that I don't have to keep moving this thing back and forth here. Yeah, that's a pretty, there we go. That's a pretty good view in itself. Okay, that means I can step over this way. And I think we'll both be able to uh, watch this. Watch me uh, make a fool out of myself once again. As folks who've seen this channel know, that's why I call this cast iron chaos. For starters, ugh, my other glove is way over here. Ugh. There we go. And, oh, there it is. It's over there. Okay. Now, the last thing is, where did I put this? I just put that aside somewhere in this mess. Ah, oh, man. Very sorry. Somewhere here, and I seem to have misplaced it already. Brilliant, Ace. Is my uh, seasoning stick. My... Imitation Crisby. Oh, here it is. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, that is a uh, combination I made myself of uh, beeswax and uh, Crisco. And I like the job it does on my cast iron pans, of which we are about to see starting right now. So... First up, here once again is our Walking Liberty skillet. Okay, the first thing I need to do is get a paper towel, which of course I put way over there. As I mentioned already, I had given that a thick coating to keep the, uh, especially to keep it from rusting. So now is when we rub it off for the first time. And now from here, you just give it a good coating. There we go. Of the uh, crisp of our uh, crispy. And oh damn it! Okay, let's use this one. Use a rag and completely cover the surface. Okay, we're not quite done yet. And now for the back, where once again, we've got to get this into all those little nooks and crannies, as I've been saying again and again. So, give this a nice, good, brisk. There we go. And a little bit here and a little bit there. All right, there's a start for us, for you. And into the oven goes Lady Liberty for her real seasoning. Nice. Ugh. I'm not sure if you can see what's going on. So let's try again. Move this guy out of the way. There we go. Yeah. All that just for this. All right. And that would be the favorite. First, I'm rubbing off the excess 
of all that Crisco. Nice smooth surface on this. Favorites really are definitely the unsung heroes of vintage cast iron. I would probably put favorite on in par with Griswold as far as being smooth and light. So yeah, a favorite. If you can score a favorite, you definitely have yourself a real treasure. And I very much hope you get a lot of use out of it. As you can see, it was not hard at all to uh, coat this either. This thing cleaned up nice, is coating nice, and with any luck, it should season nice. Come on. There we go. And this guy goes into the oven. Finally. Pig head. If it sounds like I'm grunting and groaning, yes, again, you're right. Uh, let's just say I'm not as young as I used to be. But I'm doing my best. So start here be sure to get some on those grooves all right a little bit in the eyes the nose and the mouth I think I missed a little bit up here. Uh. And now for the inside. That's why we heat up the iron first, because this stuff melts so easily when we apply it, when we apply it. here and a little bit more there okay wipe his nose because I'm being polite and I do believe it's time to go into the oven mr. hoghead Finally, the last and the best of it. As they said in, um, what was it? In, uh, what was the alien bug movie? Oh yeah, Men in Black. As they said in Men in Black, because you wanted the best of the best of the best, sir. Okay, and here it is. Oh man, this is heavy. Really heavy. But there we are. Ugh. All right. There it is. Whew. Let's see if I can. I'm sure you probably want a closer view of that. So. I'm almost done. First, give it a quick whisk rubbing out. 
I'm doing my best not to say anything suggestive. I mean, yes, you can make suggestive jokes if you want, but I'm live. I'm going, I'm trying not to. Now we liberally apply our imitation crispy, which is basically what the stuff is. Come on, I gotta do those again, those corners. There we go. Fortunately, this is much easier than that pig's head was. And now for the outside. <laughs> First, wipe off the excess. Now apply our crispy. I really like the way this thing cleaned up. I'm t taking that as a good sign. Mm. If you believe in signs. All right, there we go. Maybe a wee bit more around the sides. Oh, there it goes. Okay, maybe not. Hold on one second. There we are. <laughs> a little bit here, a little bit there. Get this rubbed in. Yeah, again, cast iron seasoning is not too difficult. Even on big pots like this. <clears throat> It's just not very dainty. All right. Ugh, there it is. Looks nice already, if you ask me. And now, into the oven. All right. Need another glove for that. Okay. Brilliant. Oh, sorry. There we go. Finally. <laughs> and with that, the seasoning begins. As folks know, I'm going to uh, bring that up to a temperature of 300 degrees and give the favorite and the um, maybe the BSR a second rub down. Uh, you know, so that it will remove any blotches. And then from there, it'll go to 400 for four hours, four hours, two hours, which means in a total of about two and a half hours, you know, that's not going to take long to go up to 300. We will have some seasoned cast iron, including the, uh, including the BSR. <laughs> Phew. Okay. Let's see what we have here for comments. <sighs> Yeah, again, I am kind of gasping here, <laughs> and I've been doing my best to stay in shape, too. That pig head cast iron looks difficult to season. Yeah, all of those little nooks and crannies, it's really hard to get it all in there, and I can only hope I did my best. 
but I will find out when it comes out of the oven. So, hmm. And hi, all. Sorry, meet uh, Shadow Walker XM. Hello, you were at a meeting. Well, we are almost done here, yes, but as you can see, we run a little bit late tonight just for you. So, there you go. Glad that you're out of the meeting while we were still live, as, um, as Papa Dan says. So, <laughs> Uh, I'll okay, have to look this up. Blue shop towels work best. They don't have lint. You have a very good point there. I'm a little out of sh out of those shop towels. I'll probably have to get more of them. In fact, fisherman waiting for a little cooler temperatures here to clean some cast iron up, season it up. Hopefully tomorrow should be around 60. Yeah, that would be a good time. We're actually running a little bit cooler here in New England, which is why tonight and tomorrow are actually not a bad time to do that. And William, to serve pop or popcorn at a poker game or game night, not make it just as in a bowl. <laughs> uh, I'm so sentimental. My dad died 29 years ago. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, Cynthia. Um, the best I could say is, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and now, again, my mom passed on two years ago, and I am still constantly talking about her. But... I'm finding it better to remember and honor her when uh, things like Mother's Day and her birthday come around. So that, but that's just me. I'm not telling you what to do. Uh, but you know, might want to think and maybe feel happy when you remember your dad. Okay, but other than that, and I really don't think there's too much else here. Uh, William H., I think about various options to uh, repurpose your Dutch oven before I drilled any holes. Once a hole is drilled, it can't be undrilled if you want to use it for something else. Yeah, there is that question. What is Crisby? Crisby is one of those brands of cast iron seasoning that was made especially for well, for seasoning cast iron. The uh, owner and founder of Crisby, in fact, he is or was a member of the uh, Facebook cast iron community before he went and founded his own business, Crisby Cast Iron Seasoning. Crisby stands for Crisco plus beeswax. Of course, he can't call it Crisco because that's trademark, so he calls it Crisby. And it is some pretty good stuff. It's also one of the first commercial uh, cast iron seasonings to have been uh, pr to have been produced. Since then, there have been some other brands that have come out and have done a lot of uh, effort in promoting their brands as well, like uh, Buzzy Wax, for instance. So, or even the uh, gentleman over at the Cast Iron Cookware uh, has his own uh, brand. He, I think, he calls it Easy Beasy uh, Cast Iron Seasoning. So, <laughs> but nonetheless. Hoy. Wow, we are already getting on to an hour and 42 minutes here, so I'm sorry to uh, have kept, kept everybody waiting. But, well, as I said, we've done really what, what we uh, set out to do. That uh, big BSR fish fryer is now out of the lye in the oven, and it's going to be seasoned, and it's a good thing because I've got some big plans waiting for that one. You are going to be seeing this, uh, this, uh, fish fry this uh, BSR fish fryer in action very soon. Here's a hint of what I'm helping to do this weekend. Deep fryer battle. And with those three words, I think that's a sign, I guess, of really of uh, how we can uh, fin finish this off. Because as I said, this has been a long evening. And thank you as always to everybody for showing up. Yeah, I think we can do more discussion as well of the Pyrex lead. Uh, we might even have to uh, dedicate maybe one particular uh, session just for talking about lead. That, that actually sounds like a plan maybe at some point in the next couple of weeks, and I think I'll have to consider that. Other than that, though, uh, yes, and good night, uh, Shadow Walker XM. So, uh, and Rick Stumbaugh and uh, William Hurt and Cynthia Wesley, but uh, especially everybody, thanks to all of you. I say this every week because I mean it every week. It's really you folks showing up and enjoying yourselves in this channel, on, especially on these lives that it really makes this so much fun. And that's why I keep doing this every week because it's a lot of fun. And you folks are the reason who makes it, makes it so much fun. And thank you very much to everybody for showing up. So, and like Fisherman and Granny Graham and yeah, hit the like button, uh, Midnight Lacey. And well, yeah, I'm glad to uh, see you here and we hope to see you again. Likewise for Clico and Val's Black Cat's Rules. And I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. 
You know you're old if you remember Romper Room. This was the part where she held up that invisible mirror and looked through it and named the names of everybody watching. And if she called out my name or your name, that's when you went, oh, boy. So, <laughs> but, yeah, that just shows that I'm old. And having said that, though, again, thank you very much, everybody. And we will be seeing more of this cast iron in the very near future. The uh, Walking Liberty Skillet and the BSR and even the Favorite. So, and uh, But right now, the best I could say is that when it comes to uh, doing these lives, you folks are my favorites. Yuck, yuck. But thank you so much, everybody, for showing up. And have a good evening, everybody. We'll see you all next Wednesday.